Hey, Mike, guess what? What? Mike, raging rivers, hungry bears, drastic avalanches, roaring seas. No matter how prepared you are, a walk in the woods can go from innocent to disaster in the blink of an eye. Yeah. When pushed to their breaking point, humans are capable of astonishing things, things that you would never thought of possible. Yeah. Listen to In the Wild as they explore the most heroic, terrifying, and phenomenal stories of real people who survived the unsurvivable. Learn what went wrong, what went right, and how you can make it out alive if the worst case ever happened to you. In the Wild podcast reviews on Apple include Love Your Podcast from Laura. It's scary how relentless nature can be. I always enjoy this podcast at work. It keeps me on the edge of my seat. Or how about we go with Hiker0001. Uh, good stories and good narration. I like when there are sound effects that add to the ambience of the story. In the Wild podcast on Apple Podcasts and everywhere you get your podcast downloads. Broadcasting across the nation from the East Coast to the West, keeping you up to date on technology while enjoying a little whiskey on the side with leading edge topics along with special guests to navigate technology in a segmented stylized radio program. The information that will make you go, hmm. Pull up a seat, raise a glass with our hosts as we spend the next hour talking about technology for the common person. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. Welcome to Tech Time with Nathan Mum, the show that makes you go, mmm. Technology News of the Week, the show for the everyday person talking about technology broadcasting across the nation with insightful segments on subjects weeks ahead of the mainstream media. We welcome our radio audience of 35 million listeners to an hour of insightful technology with a little whiskey on the side. I'm Nathan Mum. Welcome to our show. We are live streaming during our show today on five of the most popular platforms, including YouTube, Twitch.tv, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. We encourage you to watch us live or visit us online at techtimeradio.com. You can tweet us during the show at hashtag techtimeradio. We'll do our best to respond to the tweets on the air. You can also check out our new TikTok channel by looking for Tech Time Radio on the TikTok app. I'm your host, a technologist with over 30 years of technology expertise working for Fortune 500 companies across the nation. My co-host here, Mike Roday, is an award-winning author originally from Arizona. Mike's a human behavior expert living in the Seattle area with a master's degree in forensic psychology. Mike helps keeping me from geeking out while providing an insightful information into human behavior and how it interacts with technology. We are two friends from different backgrounds, but bring the best technology show possible every week for our family, friends, and fans to enjoy. Mm-hmm. All right. Are you ready to go today? Sure. We got a busy pack show today, so let's. we're going to have to hit right on it right now. So let's start today's show. Now on today's show... All right. On today's show, this is what we got. We got a special event. Nick Espinosa is joining us. He's going to mm-hmm. be talking about positive technology items in technology with uh, regarding hackers. So we're going to talk about some positive items. Okay. Okay. We're going to talk a little bit about the holidays. Now we're, and we're going to debut the 12 days of Twitter mess towards the end of the show today. We Twitter got- mess? Twitter mess, Twitter mess. Mm, the, Twitter. So like Christmas, the 12 days of Christmas, we have the 12 days of Twitter mess done by all of the staff at Tech Time Radio. Mm-hmm. So you're going to want to listen to that four-minute parody, and um, it, it is just some great information into how all of us think when we get together to do a show. Let me just tell you that. We also have huge stories talking about cryptocurrency exchange, the FTX. We're going to be talking about some drones that are dropping from the sky. Mr. Gorday has that. And then we're going to be talking about some meat. Would you eat meat that was processed and um, produced from animal cells but not animals themselves? You're talking about meat, lab meat? Yes. Probably. Okay. Well, we're going to be talking about that a little bit later today, too. All right. Well, now let's get ready to start our top stories. What's happening in the world of technology? This is our top stories in the first five minutes. All right. Story number one, cryptocurrency exchange FTX owes more than $3.1 billion to its 50 largest creditors. The embattled firm, which filed bankruptcy in the U.S. last week, claims that it owes over $1.46 billion to the top 10 creditors. 
The collapse of the world's second largest crypto exchange has currently shaken the confidence in the already declining crypto market. Let's review the FTX story and get an update on this breaking information. Over $150 billion. In three days, that's how much the world's 15 largest cryptocurrencies lost in market value. It's because of the crypto exchange platform FTX, which is behind this token, named FTT. On November 6th, the token's value began to fall, losing more than 80% of its worth in the span of 72 hours. Once seen as a survivor in a struggling market, the fall of FTX has sent shockwaves through the cryptocurrency industry. Bankman Freed told investors that FTX couldn't cover withdrawals since its collateral was dropping in value and couldn't be liquidated. On the 11th, Bankman Freed resigned as CEO and FTX and Alameda filed for bankruptcy. According to the bankruptcy filing, FTX's estimation of their liabilities would make it the largest crypto-related bankruptcy ever. Cryptocurrency exchange FTX, which has filed for U.S. Bankruptcy Court protection, said it owes its 50 biggest creditors nearly US$3.1 billion. United States. The crypto exchange said on Saturday it has launched a strategic review of its global assets and is preparing for the sale or reorganization of some businesses. All right, so this is what we got. So we, we didn't cover the FTX story when it first broke because there's a lot of misinformation out there, Mike, and I know we talked about that internally. Uh, I said I want to make sure we actually get the story because people were just tweeting information, coming up with a bunch of information that was incorrect that has since now been taken care of. Essentially, FTX, the second largest cryptocurrency exchange, did not have enough money to cover the requests for withdrawals from customers. Yeah, because they lost all their value. That's correct. Because there's no actual real money involved. And everybody's up in arms because they say, well, I need my refunds and I need my refunds. It's going to be very interesting. You, You know what I have to say about that? What's that? Too bad. Too bad. Well, see, cryptocurrency is experimental. It's not based yeah, on any you knew cash. the risk when you got in it. Correct. You can't be complaining and whining because you lost it. And if you're going to go to any exchange out there, this is the PSA for everybody. We're going to do a bunch of PSAs today. <laughs> PSAs, what cryptocurrency exchange should you do business in? Uh, don't you use Coinbase? Coinbase. That is the only Coinbase. one. Yeah, Coinbase. That is the only one that I would give any recommendation. And the only thing that you should be doing with cryptocurrency money is spending it if you have it available to lose, right? It is still not financially backed by any government. It, the whole idea of it is to be decentralized. So there's nobody that you can point the finger to when things go down. Right now, Bitcoin is at some of its lowest numbers that it's been in the last five to six years. Yeah. And so well, you play with the money, you, got, you may get burned. And this guy apparently. swindled all of the money, and disappeared. And now they're going to try to get money back. I don't, I don't know how they're going to do that, but we're going to see. That's, it's going to be a nightmare. It's going to end up having probably some mystery people disappear and a couple other things when it's all said and done. And, <laughs> okay, Mr. Mr. Well, that's what I was going to say. That's what's going to happen. All right. All right. All right. We'll Star Trek coming two. into this story? Is what's that? Is Star Trek coming into well, this story? Not yet, or? but I, I, I'm going to try to get Star Trek in a little bit later. Okay. Probably in this story, right? Yep. Uh, a drone show? Yep. In Perth, Australia. Okay. Didn't go quite according to plan after a number of the drones fell out of the sky and crashed into the water during the performance. Oh, that's not good. So, you know, this is something that's that's becoming more and more popular as the technology grows and it's even replacing, you know, fireworks shows. Yep. So, uh it's it's due to the the ability to coordinate these things with the technology so that you can create different pictures in the sky. So, so Saturday, Sunday night's City of Light event took place in front of thousands of onlookers, but as the show proceeded, the LED-laden drones could be seen dropping from the display after malfunctioning. Said uh, 50 of them. 50 of them. 50 of the display's 500 drones encountered some kind of difficulty that caused them to plummet down into the river. That's got to be expensive, though, doesn't well, it? Well, it is expensive, considering that each one of the drones are worth about $1,300. So that that was a loss of about $66,000 that wow. went into the river. <laughs> what, do you uh, do, what do you do when drones go in the river? 
Well, apparently you, you send divers in to fish them out, which is what they did. Okay. They sent divers in to fish them out the following day in an effort to get them. Uh, although the water probably damaged the drones beyond repair. That makes sense. I'm not sure why they want to get them. Maybe they just want to, you know, keep it from cluttering up the river. Okay. Good news is that uh, those who turned up to watch the aerial light show were never in any danger. The show took place over the water at least 120 meters. Uh, from the nearest onlooker, for for those of you and not in Australia, that's 394 feet. Okay. Uh, with drone technology advancing all the time, increasing complex software, able to program numerous quadcopters to, f- to fly in formation, uh, we're probably going to see more and more of these types of things happen. And uh, while it's rare to hear about a mishap of this scale, uh, it will be interesting to find out exactly what caused it. That's interesting. They, they said that they usually typically lose one or two during these types of shows. 50 is a but, lot, uh, though. Out of a 500, 50 show. out of 500? Yeah. That's a, that's a pretty big, yeah. That, that's, that's, like, all of a sudden, you got a little smiley face that you put up there in the drones, and all of a sudden, six or seven of them come out, and now it's a little frowny face. I, I'm not sure that's, I'm not sure how that how that happens, but, you know, thank you for that commentary. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. All right, we're going to move on to story number three. All right, let's talk about meat in a can. A meat product grown in a lab has been cleared for human consumption for the first time. Let's listen to our reporter covering the FDA. Well, would you eat lab-grown chicken? An unprecedented move by the FDA last week could change how we consume meat. With explosive population growth and global demand for meat expected to double in the next 30 years, Valetti believes a lab-grown option that takes two to three weeks as opposed to months or years to make is the innovative solution we need. We're looking for a future where we can produce uh, very large uh, quantities, uh, quantities of meat uh, without having the downsides of intense uh, animal agriculture. Investors in include top meat producer Tyson, Bill Gates, Richard Branson, and entrepreneur Kimball Musk, who earlier this year cooked and ate the cultivated chicken on stage at the prestigious Life Itself Health Conference. Valetti says you too may be able to cook this meat at home within months. Does right. it taste like chicken, though? Well, I don't So The U.S. safety Nobody has said the, anything about how it tastes. The FDA essentially a, approved cell culture chicken after a careful evaluation. There's been... Yeah, quote, this unquote. is being made in a steel tank by a firm called Upside Foods using cells harvested from live animals. It's then able to be sold to consumers after an inspection by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. The FDA said that it used data and information provided by the company, not its own independent research, but provided by the company to reach its decision and had no further questions at this time. Someone wrote a big check. Uh, cultured meat <laughs> products are forecast to take a larger slice of the total meat market in the future. The Upside Foods FDA approval has been described as a major milestone in the industry, but the question still remains, will majority of people eat lab-grown food? Isn't that what spam is? Isn't spam lab-grown food? Um, no. No? What's spam? Spam is all the leftover parts. Uh, just mixed together? Yeah, they're like hot dogs. Okay. <laughs> it's like hot dogs. So it's yeah. like, okay. Lips so, and... Something Listen else. a bunch of other stuff. Okay, put together. Yeah. So you, you would you would actually have. Uh, okay, let me just tell I you. Would, yeah, no, listen, I, listen. We go to Applebee's and I get the imitation Impossible Burger, and you give me crap the whole time I order that from them. Yeah, I do give you crap. Yeah, it's yeah. Not because it's not because it's the Impossible Burger. It's because of you. It's because of me. Yeah. Okay. So you. Just, yeah. so, I'm giving you crap because you're eating the Impossible Burger instead of real meat, and it tastes good. Okay. Okay. There you go. You're going to get crap for it today. Okay. All right. All right. Story number three. Tax season is around the corner, but don't fear. Meta has already been tracking your taxes for a few years now if you filed with H&R Block and other free services which used MetaPixel. (laughs) People's income, filing status, and more extreme sensitive information has been going over to Meta and even some data to Google. All right, the metadata machine never stops looking for ways to be fed, but it seems sometimes now the beast has been snacking on the user's financial data taken directly from their tax filings. After the machines had their users' income data, filing status, dependents, names, refund amount, and more, it's being deposited into data droppings of Meta's side of the fence that makes up the shady world of data-driven analytics. 
As reported by The Verge in the markup, Metapixel has been slyly funneling financial information over to Meta. The companies using Pixel, you listen to this, run the gamut from the utter giant tax filing service at H&R Block to smaller tools like Tax Act and Tax Slayer. Popular financial advisor Dave Ramsey's Ramsey <gasps> Solution, a no. digital financial advice and software company that also used Tax Slayer, was found to employ Pixel in its services. Oh, uh, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> you're just, see, look at that. There's a big smile on your face right there. There you go. At yep. the same time, they're, they're, they're kind of your, uh, they're, they're kind of your well, uh, fire well. eye, aren't they? Yeah, okay. At the same time, the markup noted Tax Act has also used Google Analytics which was sending financial data through reported lacking, though, of the names to Google by extension of its parent company, Alphabet. Intuit, the maker of TurboTax, has also been employing Pixel, but only in its sign-in pages, meaning that it's only sending the username, sign-in times, and passwords to Facebook. So there you are. There are a little bit better companies than the other. But if you don't trust companies like TurboTax that have a clean slate considering how hard it works to mask its free filing options for users... Next time, use an accountant. Reports also show receipts with screenshots showing how users inputted data for their tax filing services are recorded and sent to Meta and Google in real time. Pixel has been used to track all sorts of data on users, so why not include your taxes? Tax season is coming soon. That's the only thing in life, right? Right, taxes, paying taxes. taxes. And death, right? Is death that and it? taxes. All right, well, moving on, we have our segment, Ask the Expert, with Nick Espinosa joining Coming up for the holiday special, we're going to be talking with Mike and I about our top five holiday movies. I found a list of top five holiday movies on what we found on the web, and Mike and I are going to share our top fives and have our debut of the 12 Days of Twitter Miss, staff song put together for the holidays. We'll be right back in a moment. You're listening to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. Hey, Mike, I'm looking for some help writing our blog post for Tech Time Radio. Uh, well, you should try Phosphor AI. It's an online service that will save you hours of work with your content creation. Simply type in your title and their AI software will get to work writing a high quality original article for you. You'll need to review the article and take 15 to 20 minutes to make necessary edits before publishing, but you'll get free articles just for signing up so you can try out the service and see how it works for you. How many articles do I get free? I, I already said you get three free articles. You should listen when I'm talking to you. Phosphor AI pricing is very reasonable for the quality of content that you'll get. Why waste time writing the content yourself when you get Phosphor AI to do it for you? Visit them online today at Phosphor AI. Again, that's P H O S P H O R A I dot com. Welcome back to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. Tech Time Radio is a weekly hour technology show that talks about current technology in a simple format without having to geek out. Brought to you by myself, Nathan Mum, and Mike Gorday. We just had our first whiskey tasting during the break. And now let me tell you about what we are sipping in our pick of the day during the show today. We have chosen Fighting Cock Bourbon, 103 proof, 1995. This is distilled in Heaven Hill Distillery. In Kentucky, we've had some other stuff from them on the show. It's a straight bourbon, non-aged, a little bit less than six years. The proof is 51.5 alcohol by volume, so it's 103 proof. Fighting Cock website claims that they're the bad boy of bourbon. It's bottled at a robust 103 proof, but it's years of aging smooth out the feathers really well. Fun fact, Heaven Hill also refers to this brand as the Kickin' Chicken. It brings out a a batik of vanilla, rye, corn, oak, and leather to the nose, preparing for the sweet yet dry palate. It should taste like chicken. It should taste like chicken? Well, yeah. Because we had a a meat chicken thing, so this is going to taste like chicken? Here we go. What's your first impression? You you, you kind of were taken back a little bit. Uh, The taste is good, but it it has this offset burn that really got me. You, You don't like the burn? No. Oh, I, I like it. I've been very, very clear about that. You, you don't like it. Uh, okay. I, 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 it doesn't I, mean that I don't like the taste, though. The taste, you know, it's uh, good. 103 proof. By the time we're done with the show, it doesn't taste like chicken. We may be singing, may be singing the 12 days of uh, Twitter mess alone if we keep on drinking this. There you go. 
All right. Well, a lot of things that you do alone, buddy. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, now that we got a whiskey out of the way, we have our technology expert, Nick Espinoza, joining the show. He's an expert in cybersecurity and network infrastructure. Nick Espinoza has consulted with clients ranging from small business to the Fortune 100 levels in 1998. At the age of 19, Nick founded Windy Cindy Networks. Later acquired in 2015, he created Security Fanatics, where he is the chief security fanatic. Let's welcome Nick to our video stream to start our next segment. Welcome to the segment we call Ask the Experts. With our Tech Time Radio expert, Nick Espinoza. Hi, Nick. Uh, Hi, Nick. How you doing? I'm good, guys. How you doing? Oh, we're doing doing well. Happy holidays for you and your family. I just want to wish everybody a happy holiday. You know, we have you on the show a lot, and I just wanted to let you know from our family here at Tech Time Radio, we appreciate you and all the time and effort you put into the show. So make sure you spend yeah. that and, and let your family know during this holiday season. We are thankful for having you on the show. And I'm I'm thankful for being here. Although at the moment, I'm not thankful for Coinbase, and I will tell you why. The one thing I didn't mention earlier is that they have lost 85% of their value in the last year. That just okay. came out today. Okay, so, okay. So, so that's, so, up to, that's up to you. So, sorry, sorry. Dun, dun, dun. I, so, so do you still have, let me ask you this, do you have cryptocurrency in, in Coinbase? The only reason why I have cryptocurrency is to pay ransomware for clients at okay. this point. <laughs> you know, that's pretty much where we're at with this. But, See, I, uh, I, been, I'm well, okay ooh, because that, I have everything that, on my if digital the bottom wallet. Falls out of the coin base. Right. So I just have a digital wallet. So I actually got out when it was pretty high. Mm-hmm. So I actually have physical, well, not physical, but digital wallet credits of a certain percentage of cryptocurrency. And so no matter how low the price goes or how high the price goes, I have those actual tangible items. Now, hopefully it rebounds and I can sell them at a higher point, but I, I, okay, I, so I, I'm i not as, as concerned with it. Right. So if the to bottom your, falls point. out of this market, yep. does that mean the hijackers are going to start demanding regular money again? <laughs> They're going to ask for a credit card. <laughs> They're going to ask for credit card purchases. <laughs> no, that mean... well, they used to do that. They, they used to before cryptocurrency. You'd have to go to like Walgreens and get like a green dot card or Maybe they'll ask for Apple gift cards, you know, who knows? But some, like some yeah. iTunes cards will have you right. go in and scratch them off. <laughs> yeah. and, there we go. Can you get 72 iTunes cards yeah. from the right. local de- dealer? All right. Bills in an unmarked envelope. We'll see. All right. Well, we'll, well Nick, you know what? So you were on our scary episodes. You, you're, you're getting all the holiday episodes here, I, I'm realizing. So you, you had the scary Halloween episode. Now we have the right. Thanksgiving happy episode. So we have them back. So what, what, what are you shaking your head no for? This is the happy episode. <laughs> the happy episode. Yeah, we, we okay. talked about yeah, positive stuff. So, okay. So, we're, we're, so meta, meta, meta get your tax information. Well, that was the story that broke today, and I and I had to do it and because- the FTX sucks. Well, yeah. the FTX thing was a positive spin. The people that were <laughs> yeah, in the, the top 50 are going to get paid out. Yeah. Okay. Mike, okay. Mike, 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 we're, we're about to prove that cybersecurity professionals are fun at parties. So All right. Let's check that here. out. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Okay, Nick, so let's talk about this, all right? Let's do it. Deadbolt, ransomware gang tricked into yep. giving victims free decryption keys. What happened here? Let's <laughs> let's, let's 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 talk yeah. about the 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 nice things of hackers. That's what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, this today. is a this is a great one. This one warms the cockles of my heart, if you will. And honestly, I wish it happened more often. So, here's what's going on with this one. Dutch police and other law enforcement like Interpol, um they figured out a way to actually trick the Deadbolt ransomware gang into releasing 150 or so decryption keys absolutely free. Now, if you don't know what a decryption key is, it's simply this. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's the key that you get after you pay a ransomware gang to unlock your data. And so obviously you can unlock everything, try to get back to normal, etc. But here's what law enforcement did to trick criminals. And I absolutely love this. They figured out that it was possible to cancel an unconfirmed Bitcoin transaction before the payment actually went through. But after they got the decryption key, meaning they took uh, basically a speedy course and said, yes, here's a Bitcoin or whatever the payment is. We want our key now, 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 now. They got it. And then they cancel payment, like canceling a check, which quite frankly is pretty awesome. So police uh, or law enforcement in 13 different companies, uh, countries, excuse me, actually helped various victims unlock their data for free. But interestingly enough, since this happened in late October, not everybody knows about this. So if you're listening to this and you got hit with deadbolt ransomware, it is very possible that you may have a free unlock out there. So you can go to deadbolt.responders.nu, not 
R-U-N-U. You never want to go to the Russian site. And you can check to see if your locked files can actually be unlocked. It's run by Interpol. It's legit. So it's very possible you may have a free decryption uh, from the deadbolt jerks. And I think that is just a wonderful, wonderful thing. That is. That's a, that's a very happy Thanksgiving type of mood, right? We all it love is. dumb. We all love dumb criminals. Well, OK, OK. okay. That, that's what we like. All right. Now, let's talk about this next one, Nick. And so I, I sent you this right. one myself here. So I found this one. Yeah. The Goodwill Ransomware Stipulates Acts of Kindness, the organization impacted by goodwill ransomware gang are being ordered by attackers to carry out good deeds before being able to download a tool for file decryption. So, so what is this about? (laughs) This is getting exciting. So you have to do a good deed to get your unlock code. Is that what they're saying? Well, well, okay. In this particular case, you have to do three good deeds. They don't want cash from you or Bitcoin or you know, whatever it is uh, in the future when Bitcoin dies or whatever. But essentially, they're based out of India and they are locking out, um, you know, organizations and they are demanding three good deeds from you and then they will give you a decryption key. Now, the first one is you have to give blanket donations to the homeless. You have to feed needy children and you have to provide hospital patients financial assistance for their treatments. Now, if you're a victim organization, you have to document those deeds and put them out on social media. In other words, they want to see the receipts on social media. And uh, essentially, if you do that, they will give you a decryption key for that as the payment, which is which is crazy. So the real question I have, and I went looking for this, as you mentioned, you sent me this. and I'm like, yeah, I've heard of this. But like I went looking I don't know necessarily who they are targeting. I have to imagine it's large corporations with little to no footprint in India of charitable giving. And for the record, at the end of the day, though, this is still extortion. Even like though the it's a Tyler Durden thing. approach. Right, <laughs> well, right. Yeah. Exactly. Well, well, they're not trying to blow up financial institutions. They want <laughs> money, uh, you know, to 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 disperse. But yes, it's very it's a very interesting concept. And uh, we're starting to see gangs in similar veins like this. But this is like a social justice, social warrior type thing. So they're locking up big corporations. You've got to help the homeless, the needy and medical patients and uh, and then get unlocked. So I think it's a pretty novel concept. <laughs> that is. We need, to, we need to think of this. All, all of a sudden, yeah. 10 years from now. All these cyber criminals are going to be essentially all these saints because they're going to make all these big, bad corporations take care of people yeah. or they don't get their assets. <laughs> v- vigilante hackers. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you, there you yeah go. But, it, but it's legally still extortion. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, you know, it's, it's an interesting one. Yeah, kids, don't run on out there and all of a sudden join a cyber gang to say that you're going to help yeah, the, that's, the, that's the world. Like that, me, that's, that's like me holding a gun to your head and say, stop smoking or lose weight. Yeah. yeah. Hey, anon- anonymous, anonymous members are still hunted by interest poll for various things even though they've done good things and bad so that's right robin hood all right nick can you tell us about a group of cybersecurity press professionals that all volunteered their time at the beginning of the pandemic to protect hospitals groups like covid19 cyber threat coalition and others that were actually combining kind of the resources of these hackers for good yeah yeah so this one's actually near and dear to my heart and the reason being is, um, and full disclosure here, I was, or am, I should still say, because we technically aren't disbanded, the chief spokesperson for the COVID-19 Cyber Threat Coalition, which is over 4,000 cybersecurity individuals in 24 time zones at its height that were basically looking at IOCs or indicators of compromise to help protect banks and other critical infrastructure at the beginning of the pandemic. And so here's how this quickly started. Basically, at the beginning of the pandemic, obviously, we all freaked out. Where's toilet paper? Oh, my God. Everybody went into lockdown. And uh, essentially, all the cyber criminals on the planet said, oh, I'm going to use that as my lure to get you to my phishing site to infect you, whatever it is. Uh, you know, some gangs came out and said, oh, we're, we're going to hit hot. We're not going to hit hospitals. Some didn't care. And so basically, Josh Sachs or Joshua Sachs at the time, he was the chief data scientist for Sophos. Uh, I believe he now works for Meta. Um, basically, put out a call and said, hey, do you want to join this? Let's start looking for you know cyber threat out there. Let's start updating in real time these hospitals, infrastructure, and all of that. And it exploded. We had various teams like you know looking at at compromises, looking at all these different kinds of things. Um, and and we were able to do a lot of good. And we weren't the only ones out there. There was the Cyber Threat League and and some others as well. But it really shows that 
at the end of the day, I think the cybersecurity industry is a service industry. We are here to help people. At the end of the day, at, at what I am doing is protecting people, protecting organizations, whoever they are, you know, against the criminals and the threats out there and, and just trying to keep everybody alive online and hopefully up and running, especially during a pandemic, which obviously was a complete mess in the first few months where we were most active. So it was great to see 4,000 people literally around the globe. There's 26 time zones and we had 24 time zones covered. It was amazing to see. It right. really was. I nice. love it. Perfect. Now we all like a good Robin Hood story, right? Yes, Did we you do. like Robin Hood? Yeah. My, my favorite Robin Hood is that Kevin Costner, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. What's, what's your favorite movie? That's my favorite. You like that one too? Yeah. I, I like that. I, I think it's got a great story plot. Um, let me hear about the same this. plot every other Robin Hood. Yeah, let's let's hear about this group that is donating stolen money to charity that is seen as a mysterious first for cyber criminals. Tell us a little bit about this, Nick. Yeah, so you know this this is honestly an interesting one because I, I think in that moment in time their heart was in the right place, but I'm not sure this one is really as altruistic as a lot of reporting made it out to be at the time. And let me explain that one. So first things first, here's what happened in late uh, 2020, around October, early November or so, the dark side ransomware gang claimed to have extorted millions of dollars from companies, uh, basically saying that they wanted to make the world a better place. So in a post in the dark web, they posted receipts for $10,000 donations to two charities. First one was The Water Project, which uh, is very heavily in Africa, trying to bring clean water uh, to Africa. That one is near and dear to my heart. And also Children International, obviously uh, helping children below the poverty line with things like food, clothing, shelter. Again, another excellent, excellent charity. Now, they couldn't legally keep the donations. Both of them came out publicly and said, yeah, no, we, we can't keep this money. You know, this is from a criminal gang, uh, you know, interestingly enough, with ties to Russia. But here's why I don't think it's altruistic. And I want to ask both of you guys, Nathan and Mike, have, do either of you recognize the name Darkseid? No. No? Doesn't, yeah. doesn't ring a bell? Not, not, not really. Not, not, not no? tons. No. So these are the guys that six to seven months, six to seven months after that, hit and took down Colonial Pipeline. Oh, I do. Okay, okay. I do remember that. I do remember that. Right, right. Now, mind you, that is after they gave these donations that had to be refunded to them. So you tell me. There you go. So maybe (laughs) Robin Hood wasn't stealing from the rich and giving to the poor. Maybe they were just stealing and and keeping it. Than it was actually Robin Hood, I think. That makes sense. I'm I'm not sure what the motive here, but if you steal millions of dollars and then give out 10000 to a charity and then post it online... Knowing that they'll, I yeah. you think they probably knew they would be refunded. I'm guessing. Yeah, ten, tens of millions. Yep. And this is this is like this is like Jeff Bezos giving a five dollar check to a charity, saying I did my part. You know, like it just it just it doesn't fly. Or hundred you know? hundred million to Dolly Parton. That's right. That's yeah, it. There All you right. go. Right. Right. Well, well Nick, it's so. always a pleasure to have you on the show. Yeah. Uh, tell us how can people connect with you outside of our show. Well, uh, as long as Twitter survives, I'm at Nick AESP, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm now on. Well, I've always been on Mastodon at Nick AESP and now Hive at Nick AESP. I just spun that one up the other day. But feel free to connect to me on LinkedIn or you can follow my Facebook page or my YouTube channel. You know, knock yourself out. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks, that, Nick. All right. Thank we'll you. see you uh, next month. That sounds great. That ends our segment. Ask the expert. Up next, we have This Week in Technology. So now's a great time to enjoy a little whiskey on the side, as we'll be doing. We'll see you after this break. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? Hey, have you ever heard of Turbo Debt? No, what is that? Something to get me into debt faster? No, Turbo Debt is not to get you in debt faster. It's to help you get out of debt. Do you have over $10,000 in credit card, personal loans, medical, or payday loans? Of course I have debt. That's the American way. <laughs> oh, contraire, mon frere. Turbo Debt will give you the option to break the debt cycle and start putting money in your pocket. That's awesome. Over 70% of Americans die with credit card debt. Do not let this happen to you. TurboDebt will give you an option to break the debt cycle and start putting money in your pocket. That's awesome. If you have over $10,000 in credit card debt and personal loans, medical or payday loans, they can help. Go to TurboDebt.com forward slash tech time. Again, that's TurboDebt.com forward slash tech time, all capitalized for a free consultation today. TurboDebt as a proud sponsor of this week's episode of Tech Time Radio. And now, let's look back at this week in technology. All right, we're going back to November 22nd, 1995. Toy Story changes the movies. 
Walt Disney Pictures releases the Pixar Animation Studio production Toy Story, the first major motion picture that is created completely by computer-generated animation. A breakthrough film, the Toy Story sets the standard for all future computer animated films to follow and catapulted Pixar into a household name. Toy Story premiered at the El Capitan Theater in Los Angeles, California on November 19th, 1995 and was released in theaters of North America on November 22nd of that year. It was the highest grossing film during its opening weekend, eventually grossing over $373 million worldwide making it the second highest grossing film of 1995. The film received critical acclaim and holds a 100% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes. It's praised by the technical innovation of the 3D animation screenplay, musical score, and the voice performance particular of Tom Hanks and Tim Allen. It's considered by many to be one of the best animated films ever made. That is This Week in Technology. If you ever wanted to watch some Tech Time history with over two years of video, podcast, and blog information, you can visit techtimeradio.com to watch our older shows or join the Tech Timers Facebook group to talk with us live all the time. We're going to take a commercial break, but when we return, we have Mike or we have Mark's Mumbles Whiskey Review and a special What We Found on the Web holiday event. We'll see you after the break. Tech Time Radio is brought to you today by Nutility, the platform that makes utility management seamless by selecting your service providers, splitting a single bill amongst roommates, and then shutting off your service when it's time for you to move out. Nutility reviews your preferences and sets up all the utilities for you. This provides you with the best local provider in your service area. It's much easier than splitting up your bills between roommates. No more late Larry not being able to get to you on time to make the payments, and no more Venmo charges or PayPal charges. One place to do your billing so that everybody pays on time. Now, how can you use this great service from Utility, you ask? Aha. Uh -huh. Well, you can absolutely get it now and get three months for free. That's correct. If you go to Nutility.com. Again, it kind of sounds like Utility, but it's Nutility.com. Use the tech code 3. And again, that's N-U-T-I-L-I-T-I.com. Get your first three months for free using the code TECH3. From experts in technology to an expert in whiskey. Now is our segment for you whiskey connoisseurs. Welcome to the Mark Mumble of the Week. All right. We thank Mark Gregoire, our Tech Time radio staff member. We're going to hear his voice a little bit later here in the 12 days of Twitter mess, so I can't be excited to, to hear how he sings his lines during that song. Mm -hmm. All right. It's finally happened. November 22nd is the National... Nathan Day. Oh, the name of that's all related to Nathaniel and Jonathan, which means the gift of God or God has bestowed. Poor Mike, he's going to have to listen to Nathan babble about him being a gift to all of us the rest of the show. I have to hear that every day. All right, right here's the Mark's Mumbles. <laughs> Bernie Lubars, an American whiskey brand ambassador for Hem Heaven Hill, started on the Bourbon Pursuit podcast. That Fighting Cock was released as a direct competitor to Wild Turkey 101 Bourbon. According to Lubers, Heaven Hills likely is to do things better and cheaper than the competitors, which is why Fighting Cock has his name and does come in at 103 proof, which is two proof points higher than Wild Turkey at 101. Most serious bourbon drinkers avoid Fighting Cock due to the perception. It is only bought by those boys turning 21 because of its funny name. Fortunately, this bourbon offers a simple and smooth drinking experience that almost all will enjoy. Mark prefers Wild Turkey 101 for that inexpensive pour, and Rare Breed is even better for a little bit money more. You know what? I am liking this. This is this is up my alley type of whiskey. Okay. This is this has got a kick in it. I, I I'm thinking I don't want to give it away. I'm not going to tell you that I'm going to give it a thumbs up. Yeah, you this did. is this is going pretty well. All right. Well. Mark, thanks for that mumble. Mike, it's time for our next segment to start, and with plenty of time for us to have our musical debut. Let the extravaganza begin now. What we found on the web. All right, today we are covering holidays, and Mike and I have each picked our top five holiday movies. Now, I was reading on the, the uh, this is the holiday weekend, all these top five, top ten holiday movies, uh, reviews come on out for all the films that they liked. And we were talking about this last night. Mm -hmm. And we're going to make a list of our top five films. Now, if you're listening at home, 
You can agree or disagree. If you disagree with us, I want you to yell really, really loudly. And you can send Mike a personal email at mike at techtimeradio.com for any of the that you don't like. And if you don't like mine, you can send it to Nathan at techtimeradio.com and we'll have Melinda Taylor respond to it. Okay, so here you go, Mike. Number nice. Here here you go. Mike. So are you gonna start with you got five to choose from. Are you going to start with number five first, or are you going to start with number one first? Uh, we'll start with number five. Okay, what's your number fifth movie? Uh, Christmas Carol with George C. Scott. Okay, what's that one about? Uh, it's about the classic Dickens tale. Okay, okay. You know? Okay, Dickens tale, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, is the, that the one with Christmas uh, Carol? Tiny Tim? Yeah. Okay. Very good. Okay, I you got I, it. I got that. I got that. All right. What, what's your number five? What's my number? Oh, we're going to we're gonna do that rotating. Uh-huh. My number five is... Elf, and that's why you didn't know what Christmas Carol was. Was no Elf. <laughs> it's Elf with um, um, yeah, that guy. No, no, no. no. Uh, Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell. Isn't like like the best. That is by far the best uh, movie out there. Uh-huh. Uh, what's what, so what are you saying? What do you have something are you gonna say? Oh, that? I was gonna say Will Ferrell because it Ferrell. wasn't coming to your head. Okay, there you go. There you go. So now number four, Mike. Uh, I like to watch the Grinches, both the original and the Jim Carrey version. So which one is your favorite then? So is, is there like what's four and what's five? Is it the original your favorite or is uh, the Jim Carrey? I don't know that I can classify them as favorites over anything else. I like watching the Grinch and then I like watching the original How the Grinch Stole Christmas with Boris Karloff. Okay. Okay. So uh, Yeah, okay. And, I, and then I sing the song at my kids. You sing, well, you, you, I you, used to. You used to sing the song? Yeah. You're well, a mean it, one, Mr. Mr. Grinch. Are you sang That's that right. at your kids? Yeah. Well, why would you sing that at your kids? What do you mean? Because I'm a Grinch. Song. Okay. Wow. Okay. Well, my four is going to be a brand new movie that came out this year. Yeah, came I don't think you're allowed. Ago. I don't think you're allowed to be talking about this one yet. No, it's called Spirited. Yeah, you're not allowed to be. Well, that oh, can't be on your list. My word. On Apple TV, it was in the theaters. Apple TV. I've watched everybody this. hasn't seen this yet, so you can't use it. Oh my word! Ryan Reynolds, Will Ferrell. It's the Charles Dickens story with a twist. So now, you know you, what Charles Dickens is. I did, yes. <laughs> now you have a lot of singing and dancing, though, so you got to be okay to handle the musical aspects of it because there's a lot well, of singing. You know, and I like a the lot Muppet, the Muppet Christmas Carol too. So. You like the Muppet Christmas Carol? Of course. Uh, okay, I, I, I did have children. <laughs> I don't remember watching the Muppet Christmas Carol, but okay, okay, all right, uh, all right. You, you, what's your number three, bud? Uh, oh, you, you, is that the the Grinch, Jim Carrey? Yeah, you yeah you wrote it down wrong, so it's the okay. Grinch with. So my yeah. third is Miracle on 34th Street. Yeah, I'm I'm surprised at that. Why is that? That's an old movie. That, that's a great movie with the Macy's thing, and yeah. you got Santa Claus gets all the letters, and he really is Santa Claus, and he helps the- How come the, you didn't choose It's a Wonderful Life? Uh, I don't really like it. It's a Wonderful Life. Oh, dang. Uh, but do you like that's It's like, a Wonderful Life? Why didn't you choose it? Well, maybe uh, it's coming on up. I don't know. Okay. Because they play it back-to-back- <laughs> All the time? Every day towards Christmas. There you go. Okay. All right. Number two. Die Hard. Now, is that a Christmas movie? That is totally a Christmas movie. <laughs> How is that a Christmas movie? Uh, he because kills it Hans. Happens. It, That's about killing Hans. In a, in a, it happens on Christmas Eve. Well, is it, uh, it happens at a Christmas party. It happens in, at in, a Christmas party. In a big- In a big Nakamoto building. Nakamoto Tower or in, whatever it is, yeah, right? Yeah, Nakamoto Tower yeah. in LA. Yeah. So it's a Christmas movie. It's a Christmas movie. That's right. Um, okay. There's nothing better than watching Bruce Willis shoot bad guys on Christmas. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Which is I am going to go number two, Home Alone. How is that a Christmas movie? Well, what, 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 what do you mean he gets left alone on Christmas? Hello. I'm just responding with the same oh, okay. the same <laughs> okay, okay. thing. Okay. Home Alone is by far now. It's I, about I, a kid who gets abandoned by his family. Well, he so the first At one, Christmas. you know, they they have See? a problem. At Christmas, they they have a problem. They counted the next person in the van, you know, so they the, the kid kind of. It's was about the child abuse. It's about child and abuse neglect and neglect. <laughs> That's right. Uh, you know what? Do, do you like Home Alone two or one better? Uh, you know, I don't think I've ever seen two. So I've I've You've seen never one. seen Home Alone two. Nope. Wow. That's where he's lost in New York. Right? Yes. Yeah. I oh, great. 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 Oh, wow. I didn't watch Home Alone 3 or 8 or however many. Oh, well, there's a lot more after that that aren't very good. All right. Here's your number one. What's your number one, bud? Uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Oh, that's a classic. Yes. Yeah, I can't argue with that. That that was that is a they must see. That is. <laughs> every year. 
<laughs> there are so many great lines from that. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, how you doing, Eddie? 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 You know, mm-hmm. The cat had all nine lives. He used them all up. All right. My number one, Scrooged. Bill Murray Scrooged. You know, for somebody who claims they don't know Charles Dickens, I you've did. named two Charles, that Charles was Dickens. Good. That was pretty good. All right. Well, now that we got through that, I know everybody's been waiting to listen to the 12 days of Twitter mess. Yeah, I'm sure. There's four minutes exciting. of exciting radio. Let's start it now. Tech Time wants to welcome everyone to enjoy the holidays with the 12 days of Twitter miss as only Tech Time can present it. Please forgive the singing. On the first day of Twitter miss, Tech Time informed me of a CEO with a big battery. On the second day of Twitter miss, Tech Time informed me to account options. And a CEO with a big battery. Me, I want to do me next. On the third day of Twitter, Ms. Tech Time informed me. Three fire board executives, two account options, and a CEO with a big battery. I'm so awesome. <laughs> On the fourth day of Twitter, Ms. Tech Time informed me. 44 billion purchase, three fired executives, two account options, and a CEO with a big battery. On the fifth day of Twitter Mess, tech time in for me. Five data breaches. Oh my God. 44 billion purchase, three fired executives, two account options, and a CEO with a big battery. That's because of Tesla. On the sixth day of Twitter, Mess Tech Time informed me. What? Six on site kitchen closings, five data breaches, 44 billion purchases, three fired executives, two account options, and a space Karen as a CEO. <laughs> on the seventh day of Twitter, Mess Tech Time informed me. Seven lawsuits pending, six on-site kitchens closing, five data breaches, 44 billion purchase, three fired executives, two account options, and a CEO with a big ego. <laughs> on the eighth day of Twitter, Miss Tech Time informed me, eight attacks on Jack Dorsey, seven lawsuits pending, six on-site kitchens closing, five data breaches. 44 billion purchase, three fired executives, two count options, and a CEO with a big battery. On the ninth day of Twitter, Miss Tech Time informed me nine fake account postings, eight attacks on Jack Dorsey, seven lawsuits pending, six on site kitchen closings, five data breaches. 44 billion purchase, three fired executives, two account options, and a Z- CEO who dated Amber Heard. <laughs> <laughs> On the 10th day of Twitter, mess tech time it for me. 10 must tweets a day, nine fake account postings, eight attack on Dak Dorsey, seven lawsuits pending, six on site kitchens closing, five data breaches, 44. La, 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 that was the wrong one. Yeah, you, you didn't move it fast enough, buddy. 44 billion <clears throat> purchase, three fire executives, two account options, and a CEO with a big battery. Perfect. Okay. On the 11th day of Twitter, mess tech come informed me. 11 board members fired, 10 must tweets a day, 9 fake account postings, 8 attacks on Jack Dorsey, 7 lawsuits pending, 6 on site kitchens closing, 5 data breaches, 44 billion purchased, 3 fired executives, 2 account options, and a CEO who shouldn't be a CEO. Just do it like me and act like you're pissed off reading. On the 12th day of Twitter Miss, tech time in for me. Oh we want to thank everyone that listened to our 12 days of Twitter miss. We wish each of you a happy holiday and a Merry Christmas. I'm just so glad this is actually recorded. Ah, ah. We are out of time. Congratulations. You're a failure. 
Oh. I failed. Did I? Yes. Did I? Yes. Did I? Yes. All right. This week's technology fail comes to us from Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg is the man behind Facebook Meta, and very strangely, on November 8th, his profile got disabled. Facebook did not release any statement as to why. There has been quite a lot of speculation, though, as to how this happened. One theory is that the account was hacked, and another one is that Facebook suspended his account for a breach of platform terms or services. Maybe it's from stealing tax data. (laughs) Facebook users have been in shock, and they keep receiving the message the content is available right now. When trying to access Mark Zuckerberg's account, poor Zuckerberg. That was the Elderberry Technology Fail of the Week. We are now going to move into Mike's Mesmerizing Moment. This is Mike's Mesmerizing Moment, presented by Story Coffee. Visit storycoffee.com. All right, here's my question for you, Mike. Yeah. Why are holiday movies always about giving and sacrificing? Really? Well, yeah, because, you know, during the the middle of the, the... Fourth of July, it's about patriotism, but why is it that holiday is always about giving? Because that's sort of the spirit of Christmas, isn't it? That's that's where we're trying to bring out all the the positive ideals of what human humanity can be, right? Okay. Of course, there's already a backside to that. What's that? Uh, it sells movies. It sells movies. Yeah. Okay. You know it. the The holidays are set up to be a merchandising generating machine and when you have these movies that come out that talk about the ideals of i know this sounds really cynical but yeah and what's you your favorite all, christmas you, movie? have all these have the all Grinch? these movies have all die hard <laughs> okay, all right, all right. <laughs> have all these movies that come out and talk about the ideals of giving um it makes you feel good and when you feel good you go out and you buy stuff and you give it is that what it is? Okay. Yeah. yeah that makes sense because so, after I watch a movie and I feel really good, then I all of a sudden the $100 price limit for my brother is now like 250 yeah, I want to give more, the, right? Yeah. It's, uh, it's called the halo effect. So you're you're putting yourself in this position. And, you know, that's, that's, how, we, that's how we re-roll. Okay. All right. That sounds good. All right. Well, let's now move to our Nathan Nugget of the Week. This is your Nugget of the Week. Seriously? Well, here's what we need to talk about, right? Black Friday TV deals. Should you buy them? Sure. No, absolutely okay. not. Wait until the Super Bowl deals go on sale. Until CES happens January 1st That's right. of the we year. We talk about this every year. We have talked about this every year. Right now is not the time to buy a television, not the time yeah, to I buy electronics. You are getting the end of the line electronics. The reason that they're on sale and they have these Black Friday sales is they're getting the rest of the crap away that they can and trying to cover their butt on the cost of producing these deals. Are you saying it's a way of merchandising? It's a way of merchandising <gasps> crap. Do not buy them. Wait for the same deal to happen on the newer model when it comes on up for Super Bowl weekend. That is my story. I tell everybody, oh, what's the greatest uh, technology item you can get now? If you want to buy a computer, buy a computer. If you want to buy some technology items, buy it. That's fine. But don't try to go on out and get that deal of that television thinking that it's going to be a great deal. Because when it comes into February time frame, when that's the shortest sales month, there's going to be a much better deal. Darn it. There you go. You know, I get excited about that. Yeah, you do. I do. All right. Well, Mike, now it's time to do our whiskey tasting pick of the day. And now our pick of the day for our whiskey tastings. Let's see what bubbles to the top. Okay. So we got our Fighting Cock Bourbon, Mm -hmm. 103 proof, 1995. Um, It's 75% corn, 13% rye, 12% malted barley, 1999. So it's under that $20 price point. What What are you thinking of this so far? Uh, I will give it a thumbs up. You're gonna give uh, it a thumbs. Wow! I, I was I was thinking you were gonna give thumbs. You kind of changed a little bit. No, I still. It, it's got a it's got a harsh kind of burn to it, but the taste and the finish is really good. It is pretty smooth, isn't it? So yeah, for 19 bucks, you know, I I, I don't know what could be any better than this. Mm-hmm. All right, I am gonna also give it a thumbs up. That's two. You should have gave it a thumbs down just to just to be. No, no, no. no. This is pretty good. We, we enjoyed this, didn't we? Yeah, I good. enjoyed it. 
it's it's pretty tasty. All right. Well, we're almost out of time here. Now, remember, listeners, you can always go and visit us at techtimeradio.com and click on the top right-hand corner where there's a Be a Caller tab. You can click on that. You can record a question. We'll talk about it on the air as we did last week. You know, <clears throat> what did you think of that 12 days of uh, Twitter miss, Mike? I don't want to. I don't want to talk about it. Was it. Wasn't that fun doing that? <laughs> Come on, we had a good time doing that. You last know, it was night. funner. It was a lot more fun listening to it than doing it. Okay, <laughs> and, and, and we were all worried that we'd get it done in time. And you know what? It was ready to go. Yeah, you did a good job. It was. It was Bravo. I, I enjoyed it. three hours into that. And I still can't wait to get the video version that will be posted on TechTimeRadio.com so you can listen to this again. We're gonna have to just share this out itself. Too, okay. Honestly. All right. Well, from all of us at Tech Time, it's an honor to be the host of today's show. I wish you back next week. The science of tomorrow always starts with the technology of today. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us on Tech Time Radio. We hope that you had a chance to have that hmm moment today in technology. The fun doesn't stop there. We recommend that you go to techtimeradio.com and join our fan list for the most important aspect of staying connected and winning some really great monthly prizes. We also have a few other ways to stay connected, including subscribing to our podcast on any podcast service from Apple to Google and everything in between. We're also on YouTube. So check us out on youtube.com slash tech time radio, all one word. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did making it for you. From all of us at tech time radio, remember mums, the word have a safe and fantastic week.